we're going to go to Adam Kareem with Protodroid Delta next, and this is Protodroid Delta. Let's roll the trailer. I am Delta, a Protodroid. You're another protodroid? Like me? Que emocionante! I always assumed I was the only one. You cannot allow the worthless lives of a few gang leaders to jeopardize the safety of thousands of civilians. Life and death isn't yours to decide. We will find another way. In order to win, I must grow stronger. Ay, mija. Your blade is looking weak. Come, vamos! I will teach you my techniques. Will be the change. And that is the action platformer Protodroid Delta. On the line, we have Adam Kareem. What is up, Adam? How's it going? What's going on? It's great. Yo, it's great seeing you again, man. You're like one of the most enthusiastic pe people in general that I've ever met. <laughs> I'm nuts, man. I don't know what it is. I just love people. I love uh, I love making games, which is like a hobby of mine. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's easier for me to be hype because I just like uh, like generally speaking. So like uh, yeah, I'm I'm hype now. It'd be harder for me to tone it down than it is. So I just go with the easy route. We're gonna play Protodroid Delta now. I'm, I'm jumping super right in. I'm, I'm jumping right just in. Just jump right in. There we go. Yeah. So I always thought it was kind of lame that oh, I was always inspired by the idea of making like a 3D Mega Man that played really well because like that hasn't been done. It's like 30 2D 2D games, and then like other franchises which made a good jump like Mario, Zelda, Metroid. I was like, yo, this should be a good 3D platformer Mega Man. Um, so that was like the original inspiration, um, and uh, and I just kind of took it from there, man. Yeah, it's. I mean, you could definitely see the inspiration, um, and you did some some other prototypes, which I think that's fascinating. A lot of uh, you know developers starting off was like, "How do I start off?" And like, you did it the perfect way. Can you explain some of that? Yeah, dude, that's actually where it started. Um, it actually didn't start with Mega Man, my game dev journey. I started out wanting to make a Sonic fan game, like a, okay, like a three D yeah. Sonic game that that played really well. And so I was like, "Yeah, man, like it'd be great if Sonic could like have a three D game." Um, and then I, I kind of like started the bug was that like this belief that I could somehow create a good 3D Sonic. So I entered my first fan game into uh, Sage, the Sonic Amateur Game Expo. And it did okay. It was called Sonic Explorers. Um, and then from there I was like, well, let me go to like the next franchise that I've loved so much. Um, let me do Mega Man. And so this game actually started as a Mega Man X uh, 3D platformer prototype called like Mega Man X and, and Zero Training Missions, where you could either play as X or you could play as Zero. And right, um, and so. so and then at some point I was like, you know what? Like I'm spending hours making this game every night after work and, and, and hanging out. That like I should like make it something unique and make it its own. And so that's when the idea for like turning it into Protodroid uh, came to life. Yeah. And what was your initial What was your initial day job while you were working on these like these really cool I, prototypes? Yeah, man. When I started, I used to work at Whirlpool designing like home appliances. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. I still work full time. And so I just play, I just, I make, I do games as a side, um, it's like a, a hobby. So that's kind of like the way I've been managing things. Um, actually, real quick thing about the game. So Alfonso, it's like an auto lock mechanic. Whenever you point the camera in the general direction of an enemy, it will lock onto it. So you can shoot them and, it, and it'll automatically shoot at the, at the target. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is if you press the right, if you press and hold the right trigger when she's on the ground, she'll do a dash. There you go. And if you combine that with a jump, you can get like really crazy distances because like anyone who's played Mega Man X, that's like the core mechanic. It's like dash jumping and dashing a lot. So I really put a lot of effort in trying to like retain the feel of that uh, because that's really important for like a Mega Man X game. Yeah, let's just go into the mechanics. Let's just talk about the game in general. Yeah, dude. So like for me, the biggest challenge is like, how do you make a 3D Mega Man that doesn't become like a third person shooter? This is a very different skill set from like game design wise for someone who's used to just like pressing buttons versus managing two sticks, right? 
And so it's like, I didn't want to alienate folks who were, you know, like myself, like who were more into the platforming elements of it. And that's what's so genius about the Mega Man games is that like, you just have to jump and shoot. Those are the only commands really. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I, how can I like capture that? How can I like jump and shoot in a 3D environment? And that's where the soft lock on came on. Where like, originally I had the camera kind of like focus on the target, but it became disorienting for a player to like gauge your jumps when the camera is also moving the entire time. So I was like, let me instead, let the camera be alone and just have like through coding, like be smart about who you're locked on. So the players always keep their spatial awareness so they can jump and shoot at the same time. That's step you could definitely see that reflected in, in the gameplay for sure. It, it feels super solid. I know you were really paying attention to those mechanics. Oh, oh. Sorry, Bonzo. Got, got <laughs> smashed up. And he was practicing last night too, for sure. He's like, yo, <laughs> let me get that game. Like, send me a link to the game because I need to practice and not look like an ass while I'm playing. <laughs> but he's doing, he's doing exactly what I said. <laughs> he, yes, yeah, he's doing really well, though, so far. Uh, he's can doing you talk well. About um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, Alfonso, um, one thing uh, you can do is if you press and hold the shoot button, you can hold, you can store a charge shot, and those destroy shields immediately. Okay. Um, and so when you deal with those turrets, the, the, the technique is either um, you, you, you rush up and engage them and take them out with like your melee attack, or you break, because the, the melee breaks shields, or you break their shield from a distance with their charge shot, and then they become mm -hmm. kind of exposed. So that's what I'm trying to do game design wise, is like, you have to give players a reason to like, to use each tool, you know what I'm saying? And I'm taking a lot of cues from like Doom Eternal, how they're really smart about like, yeah. each weapon is a tool, and every encounter with an enemy is more like solving a problem than it is about just like your ability to shoot really fast. Yeah, that's dope. You have like a super diverse cast of characters and that was very apparent in your Kickstarter. Can you yeah. uh, kind of dive into that? Yeah, man. Um, so it's like, when I had the opportunity to like make a game and create a world, I kind of wanted to make something that reflects more the world that I grew up in. Because like, you know, what you see a lot in gaming is that like, take the Mega Man franchise, for example, there's over like 30 games and all the characters are of the same skin tone for the most part. And then ad additionally, they're majority guys, you know what I'm saying? It's like in over 30 games, you can count on one hand the number of female characters who are almost always in some sort of support role, not necessarily heroes or really yeah. significant. Um, and then you have like all the, all, all the heroes with the same skin tone. And, and I get that in a sense that like people tend to create things that they can see themselves in. You know, they create things in their own image. So when games are made mostly by like Japanese developers or, or, or like the same fo sort of folks in like in the US, you know, like white folks or whatnot, um, you know, they create work characters that reflect their, their upbringing. So I was like, well, I got a chance to do the same for me. You know, like I can create characters that look like the people I grew up in. So there's like four, I think there's a total of five black characters in the cast. There's three Latino characters. Um, I really wanted to be like a celebration of like the true diversity of gamers as, as a whole. You know, it's like it's great to have more games that look more like the people that play them. Um, one thing I joke about a lot is that like Super Smash Bros, right? As like Super Smash Ultimate has like over 75 characters in the roster. And there's like more furries and animals than there are like black or brown characters. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's in a lot of ways like a reflection of like over 30 years of like gaming icons and gaming history. And in 30 years, you know, we got more furries and, and, and than like black folks. And if they are, they're either bad guys like Ganondorf or they're like just an alternative skin. So I was yeah, like, yo, I can make a game. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say or mad ambiguous. Like mad and big, like yeah, like mad buying ambiguous. a commando, the new buying a commando, or you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, man. And so it's like you know, I want to create something that like players like myself growing up can like see themselves in because there currently aren't a lot of options like that. Um, and so things are getting better. You know, we got things like Horizon Zero Dawn, the female lead, Control, um, yeah. like strong female lead, um, and you've got like more diversity in the cast of like other games. But you know, we're moving along, but we're not quite there. And so that's why I made a, a point for my game. Yeah, I really dig that you you uh, added that to the game for sure. Your personality, because I wanted to see that too as a kid, and even now, like, where am I represented in this? Besides, like, the create your own character type scenario. Right. Um, right. So you did a Kickstarter. Um, and can you just talk a little bit about like, like how you started development and kind of moved through development? And then you're also part of the um, the Humble Black Game Developer Fund. Yeah. Can you talk about that experience? So uh, I guess I'll start with um, I guess I'll start with the Kickstarter because not a lot of people have done a Kickstarter. Um, they're super hard. They are super hard, um, especially if you do it alone. I pretty much managed my Kickstarter on my own at first. 
Eventually, I hired help for like marketing and to run ads, which has been significant, tremendous. But the reason I ran the Kickstarter is because, like, you know, I do games as a hobby, and I felt kind of like I really wanted to see number one, is there like a market for a game like this? Um, but number two, I wanted to see if there's a way I can help to sort of like offset the, the expenses since I'm paying for all these things myself, you know. Um, I kind of felt guilty, like, you know. Everyone has a hobby, you know, but like, um, I felt kind of bad spending like too so much on like personal hobby um, for my family and whatnot. So I thought a Kickstarter might be a good way to kind of like, you know, bridge that gap. Um, and it was super difficult, but in the end, it was really awesome because like, it showed me that the people really like a game like this, and yeah. and people really like this idea because I was like, let me get an early read about like the viability of this. You know, like maybe this, if you know, maybe it's not that interesting to people, but instead the response is really strong. Um, and then, sorry, what was the follow-up question? Oh, I was just saying, yeah, the Kickstarter, it's like you, you have this journey, right? Prototyping, then you build Protodroid, then you do a Kickstarter, and now you're a part of the humble Black Game Developer Fund. Like, what is what has been your uh, experience uh, with that program? Man, Humble's been fantastic. These folks have made, like, it gives they've been such a large load off my shoulders because, like, with the Kickstarter, like it was hopeful, like the goal was just offset the expenses as best I could, but it didn't really cover the full game's budget, uh, at least as, as I projected it out. Um, so getting the support from Humble has been amazing because now it's like enables me to go get higher quality talent, higher quality 3D artists, higher quality animators. Because um, I'm working primarily with myself, that's doing most of the, pretty much all the coding and the game design and like the world building and such. But I'm leveraging a lot like 3D artists to help with the design. My main 2D illustrator who does all the like the helps with the character design. And without them, like this stuff doesn't happen, you know. So like. Um, and, and so the ability to like not have, like to be able to get good talent is is really really helpful, really really helpful. So I, when you were starting, you were like building the game, you're building the levels yourself, kind of like gray box right. style, right? Uh, and right. then you needed to figure out how to how to build it out and, and get your team get a team um, jumping aboard. Can you describe a little bit about that process? Because I think developers who are, are um, developer people who want to be developers kind of don't understand that process and it would be interesting yeah dude but... the most i can say is you gotta you gotta make a prototype of something you know what i'm saying because what happens is in, like in making protodroid or making like my fan games i learned what i'm good at and what i'm not good at and i learned like what i like doing and what i don't like doing um and then then i was able to be more focused about like what is the specific help that i need to hire and like what things do i want to focus on so case in point I really love game design. I love I love programming mechanics, programming AI, the stuff that makes a game playable. But I found from making my my fan games, my strengths in the art department were really weak, and it was taking me a ton of time to just like get the lighting right for a level, or or set the right assets, or just make a level look believable. So by making those like those quick fan games, I got to learn that about myself, and it became easier to sort of build a team that way. Plus, like. When you have something playable, you know what I'm saying, you have a lot more, I'll call it like cred. Like people know that like, yeah. okay, this guy doesn't just have ideas. He can deliver and bring a lot to the table, him or herself. And so, um, and so that's been like an important part of the journey. Oh, sweet. You got him when the shield was down. That was nice, Alfonso. <laughs> that was nice. Um, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> to the point of game design, there's very little of it in this, in this part of the game right now. This was like mostly like I created it. It's called like a zoo. I got this idea from Forrest Dowling, who's like a really good uh, developer over at the Molasses Flood. He was a level designer for Bioshock Infinite, um, and now he runs his own game studio. And he was like, you gotta make a zoo, which is like, that's like your, your small playable space, so you can quickly like get a sense of the game feel and things like that. So that's what this 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 demo area sort of out as. It's just like a bunch of like random platforming challenges without much thought of like difficulty scaling or, 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 or relative placement. I was just like, okay, how does this feel when you got a bunch of stuff in front of you? So the difficulty spikes are all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's understandable. Um, yeah. What what advice would you give inspiring uh, young game developers who are trying to get into the game? Or not even young, just like inspiring uh, game developers? Let me see. Advice I would give, I would say number one, um, make a game as quick as you can. I know some people get really excited about making an engine or, or trying to make like, this big, grand, big like space opera that like, has all their ideas. You don't want to make your first project your most beloved one, right? Your first project has to be something you're just learning from and testing from um, because like you're gonna make a ton of mistakes and you don't want that to kind of be a, like attached to the thing that you, that you care most about. 
Um, and so that's why for me, like, it was fun to start with fan games um, because, like, I can, like, take those learnings and put them in. Um, the other thing, too, is really make leverage of, like, all the game engine, all the game developing tools. Like, Unreal is free, and the Blueprint system is incredible. Like, I'm not a code, like, I don't know C++ myself, you know, like, um, yeah. I just, you know, but I through the Blueprint system, I'm able to, like, um, to create whole games without ever writing a single line of code. And so it's been, like, really, really awesome. Um, and so I think being able to basically remove the barriers, oh, rotate the camera around, oh, there you go. So being able to re remove the barriers of getting your game made is, is the best advice so that you can start, you know, get the, get a feel for like, what am I good at? What kind of games do I like to make? And, and how should I move forward? I'm, I'm just checking it yeah. out a little bit. Yeah, man, yeah. The, the, the really big trick, uh, Alfonso, if you can work the timing is like the dash jump. So it's like right trigger then A, right trigger then A, and you become like this like space ninja. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go. She goes kind of nuts, man. What other mechanics you have in the game, or, or do you have planned that you can share? Huh, funny you should say that. Um, I guess I shouldn't do this on the stream, but like, are you guys by a computer? Yeah. Of course you are, you're playing on the game. Okay, um, wait for a second. Destroy this enemy and I'll tell you the little secret. Okay, um, so um, someone hit left control three times in a row. I, no, no, that... So we have someone else who's who's handling that. That may not work. With you get oh, right. Yeah, they, there it is. Okay, you've now unlocked okay, you literally everything. So she has a double jump. So if you jump again in the air, oh, you got to take care of that guy. There'll be a double jump. You can perform the dash in the air. So if you jump and then press dash, to perform that in the air. There you go. And That's you can get dope. like really crazy distances with that. She also has um um different weapons. So press uh, Y on the gamepad, the top button, I think it is. Now um hold the shoot button. And there's a machine gun. Oh, oh! you shot the rocket launcher at close range. It's going to mess you up. But it tells you which weapon you have equipped at the bottom. Uh, so the shotgun, so you can fire that. It basically gives a, a wide spread um, when you fire it. The idea, I think I want to make that like like an effect where it will disable enemies um, so that it becomes more of a strategic thing and less of like a damage spread. Because she has damage spreading options. Javelin is the most powerful shot in the game. It, it should cut through shields and it travels a big distance. It's like the one but it, it takes up your meter. So if you see all weapons share the same meter, because I really want to focus on like strategic decisions, like like quick strategic decisions about what weapon am I going to use? What advantages do I get from this weapon while avoiding hazards and avoiding lasers and avoiding people shooting at you? It's like like Mega Man, you know, you have to always be thinking on your feet playing Mega Man. Yeah. Um, the other thing she has are more blade attacks. So if you go um, go to a flat, like get past this hazard and, and you can and you can kind of see them more easily. Um, because there's different moves you can do with her blade. <laughs> oh. I can get past this. You just gotta jump past. Okay, so hold hold the left trigger. Oh, you got the, you already have it unlocked, the dash unlock, so. So hold the left trigger, and then you'll see the button mapping for the different um, oh, blade nice. specials she has. So if you press um, like A, she'll do her, her, her vertical one, which is ideal for taking out um, enemies who are above you in a single shot. Oh, that's and then if you, if you press like square, it, it performs like um, a wave that she'll shoot out and it also is like the single strongest like blade strike. So if anyone is directly in front of you, it kills them, uh, knocks them out. Oh, that's the dash. That one is for closing uh, great distances very quickly. And then that's the spin. It's kind of inspired by like um, like like Link's um, um, spin attack on Legend of Zelda. Now that one, yeah, I have to work on that special effect so it looks more powerful. But that's the strongest attack in the game um, currently. Um, so yeah, this is a uh, well, yeah, that those things you can unlock. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's cool to see that, like the process behind, you know, balancing and adding mechanics, and I think that's really important. It's cool to see how the sausage is made sometimes, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Um, and you know, some of these things subject to change. It's still early in development, but that's generally what I want to go with with the attacks. Um, and there's little secrets too. Like for example, um, those guys who float, you can one shot them if you jump and slash, because the jump and slash is slightly stronger than like the first two hits of the blade combo. So it encourages players to kind of discover these hidden mechanics. I took a lot of cues from like Smash Bros. How it's like yeah. every attack has like has like damage data. This does five percent, but the but the but the um, neutral area it does like eleven percent. So if you jump and hit this blade, it'll take them out in one shot. Um, little small guys, um, because it does a little more damage. Um, but yeah, it's just like I don't know if you can tell, I'm really into this game. <laughs> yeah, that's that's tight. So, Kit, tell us um, where you can find the game. Where is it going to be released? Do you have any dates? I know that it may be TBA. 
Um, it'll be released on Steam and Nintendo Switch. Uh, that's what I'm targeting. So PC and Switch, right now it's listed on Steam. Um, you can wishlist it on Steam now, um, Protodroid Delta. You can follow me on, on the, in games development at Protodroid Delta on Twitter. Um, and then you can check the, the Kickstarter page. Uh, that's where I post like monthly updates about development and I basically keep like a monthly devlog. Um, this guy's still Yeah, it's just, it, it's, I'm <laughs> glad, I'm glad. He's enjoying it, man. That's the thing that matters the most. Um, that's that's so, awesome. yeah, I just like, really wanted to like um, emphasize like the, having a diverse cast and uh, giving players who can see how they can see themselves in. So like one of the other yeah. proto droids, her name is Anne-Marie Dorado and she's Latina. Um, and she's like Delta's mentor. So all those blade attacks that I talked about, you actually have to find her hidden throughout different stages. And then she teaches a different mechanic um, nice. while also talking more about her history because like she's, uh, they have a, they kind of have their, Ethos is kind of at odds. Like Delta is a protodroid who believes in bringing bad guys to justice through like the law, whereas Emery Dorado is of the of kind of like the Thanos idea, like the lives of the many outweigh the lives of the few. And so if it means we have to, to take some people out to bring peace, I'm willing to pay that price. You know what I'm saying? And so there's a lot of like like depth in their in their in their story and their, their and the conflicting kind of views. But they're both heroes. You know, just because Android is more violent doesn't mean she's a bad guy because they're both trying to achieve peace. Um, it's just there's a conflict in their, in their means and their methods. Um, and the cast is majority female. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I think it's like the ratio is like um, six to four. Um, a lot nice, of the main nice. story leads so, are, are female leads. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, yeah I just really wanted to do a lot. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, everybody can, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Kareem. We, we appreciate it. Yes. The game is Wish list the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wish list it. It's, it's on the Steam page. Um, we'll talk to you later for sure. Um, yeah, Thanks, that guys. was Adam Kareem with Protodroid Delta. I like the game, man. You were killing it.